I'm going to ask you to stand with me one more time, and we're going to declare. We've been declaring word before every service this year since the beginning of this year, and I've enjoyed it. I don't know about you, but I enjoy it. There's something, there's power in declaring the word, amen? So here we go, Matthew 24, 14, and the good news about the kingdom will be preached throughout the whole world so that all nations will hear it. And then the end will come. Amen. You may be seated. I believe Jesus is coming soon, don't you? I've heard it since I was a kid, and I'm 48. And if I live to be 80, I'm still going to be preaching that Jesus is coming soon because it'll be that much sooner for me, that's for sure. Every breath you take brings you closer to the kingdom in the heaven. In heaven. Amen? I believe that. A heavenly roundup. There's a heavenly roundup. And so... Uh, I've got the, I got my theme song for this message. You want to hear it? <laughs> do, 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 do. you like that? Somebody say, yee-haw! It's roundup time. Could you imagine what it's going to be like in heaven, though, with the heavenly roundup, the big roundup in heaven? Oh, I love it. I want to share a little bit of a vision of what uh, this next year, some of the things that the Lord has placed on our hearts. And in Hebrews 10.25, it says this, And let us not neglect our meeting together as some do, but encourage one another, especially now that the, that the day of his return is drawing near. Jesus is coming. He's coming soon, and we need to be ready, and we need to be telling everybody we can, everybody, our neighbors, our friends, our family, we need to gather as many people as we can. And so uh, I, one thing I've noticed since post-COVID, I've talked to a lot of different pastors, and there's a lot of churches that never have recovered from COVID because people got used to staying at home. And if anything the devil's really good at, he's good at separating and keeping people not from congregating. But when people of God come together, when the children of God come together and they lift up Jesus, I, don't, I think anything is, is possible. Amen? That's why I love coming to church. I love getting together with my brothers and sisters because the Spirit of the Lord comes. And it's, it's more, the Bible says we're two or three are gathered. Amen? And so um, we haven't had that issue in this church, thank the Lord. We have to know Holy Spirit's here with us. He's with us. He's guiding us. He's leading us. We've actually grown through COVID and post-COVID, but I give all, all the glories to Him. I'm not smart enough to figure it all out, but I'll leave it in His hands. Amen? And I started going back when I was writing this message and I started thinking about how we started the church. And many of you probably weren't there, but we started the church in our barn out back at our house. There it is. That was my cabinet shop, and we took out all the equipment, all the stuff, and we stacked it and, and crammed it in. And we did this in like two weeks because we thought we were going down to the crossroad church down here. And so we... We, uh, we put a, I, I ordered this banner. It said Crossroads Cowboy Church because we thought the church was going to be at the crossroads. We thought for sure. And we, I paid $500 for these banners. And when the church did, fell through and didn't come available, Jen said, are we changing the name? I said, nope, we paid $500 for the banners. <laughs> <laughs> and so we're sticking with it. We got to stick with it. And so we, we strung this, this banner out in front of our house on the 107 cutoff. And we start, services are going to be at 10 o'clock. We had hay bales around the outside. Uh, Denise and Alan will remember this, right? You were there. And Dylan, you were at the first service. And uh, they were sitting, sitting there on the hay bales. And, but before that, they started at 10. And it was about 10, 15, and nobody was there. And, you, you know, you try, put yourself in my shoes, you, you, nobody's there. It's 10, it's 10, it's 10, 10, 50, or, or 10, quarter till 10. There you go, quarter till 10. And I'm thinking, oh, Lord, I'm going to have to just preach to my family. I was thinking, oh, Lord, Kathleen was right. Nobody wants to have church in a barn, Dad. That's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> 
She told me that. And, and But about, I don't know, about 10, five, 10 till, about another five minutes, all of a sudden cars started coming down the driveway. And I was like, oh, praise the Lord. You remember that? And Sam took, Sam took the kids and she taught them in our dining room and, and around the dining room table. And we had church in the barn. Then we went from the barn because we sold our house and out, we also outgrew the barn. We went to this little white schoolhouse down here, just down the road. And I didn't want to go there. This is the amazing thing about, about the Lord, though. When we asked for a place, Lord, we need a place to go, we prayed. There was three places that came available for free. And, but that one we prayed over, and, and I didn't want to go. But Jen and Sandy said, I think it'll work. It's great. We can do this. And I walked in, and there were snakeskins on the floor. And that was, I, I was like, I'm out of here. I don't do good with snakes. We're not that kind of church. We're not going to do this. But we cleaned the snakeskins out, and we got all the, all the wood cleaned out, and the pe paint was peeling. It was like a, have you ever seen that, that uh, light lime green paint that they had back in like the, I don't know when it was, but it's ugly. It's ugly on any way. But it was peeling, so we scraped all the walls, and we painted all the walls. Inside that building, it looks really nice, I promise you. And we set it up for a church, and it grew. It grew. And I meant to say this, that in the barn, we started with one of my workbenches, where my, well, my saws were, and we took pictures of families and people, and we put them up on there, and we called it our family wall. And then when we moved down here, the, the wall got bigger. Remember that? It got bigger. And we taught the kids in an insulated tractor trailer. Man, we were high-tech rednecks. <laughs> we, we had, uh, we, put, we put skids, we stacked up skids like a, like a deck, you know. There was them blue pallets. They, you know, if you ever need a deck, quick, there you go. Just put you some blue pallets down. And they, we would teach the kids in there, and when the wind would blow, it would shake the trailer. It was great. But the church grew, and it kept growing till the, how many came in the white schoolhouse? Okay. And, and, and when we'd sing and the kids would jump up and down on, in the river, the whole floor would go up and down. And one time I had to say, stop, stop. That's too much. Too much. We're going to go through the floor. I promise you. And, oh, another memory I remember. Uh, in the uh, birds had laid some, some eggs in, in the chimney. And I promise you, it sounded like rattlesnakes. <laughs> you remember that? Everybody said, there's snakes in this building because we saw all them snake skins. They're like, what kind of church is this? But you'd hear them. You'd hear them chirping. But it sounded just like rattlesnakes. I promise you. I don't know how they did it, but it, 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 it was good. And then Brandon's drum set blew up. Remember that? He was in the middle of worship, and all of a sudden, pow, pow, and all smoke, and everybody started screaming. It was wonderful. We had fireworks and tech, techno going on, it, pyrotechnics. It was great. But then we moved to the skating rink. And the skating rink, uh, we felt like a marble in a shoebox there because we had about 102 people, 110, somewhere in there. And we went to this 25,000-square-foot building. But we went in and we painted every beam in that place and painted the walls. And we, it was looking, it looked good. We set up a platform. I was like, man, this is really nice. And and it grew, and our family wall got bigger and bigger. And, and now the Lord is blessed. He just, if, you, if you're faithful to him. I remember him speaking to me very clearly when we went to build this building, and we had the plans. It was tw the sanctuary was 20 feet shorter. And we had a few disagreements, and I thought, well, you know, because we had changes of plans a few times. But the Lord spoke to me so clearly and said, you need to make it bigger. Where's your faith at? If you build it, I'll fill it. He kept speaking to me over and over. So I went back into the board meeting. I said, we've got to make it 20 foot longer. We've got to do it. If we, I just feel this is what the Lord wants us to do. Could you imagine 20 feet of less seating room in here, what it would be like? We filled it up twice now almost on Sundays. The first service is pretty full. It's getting there. And so the, the, the ten, we have 10 acres. We have 10 buildings right now. It's crazy what the Lord is. He's, it's only through Him. We give more to missions than we ever have given. It's just, it's just the Lord. But so with growth comes a place where I don't get to know everybody. 
You know what I'm talking about? There's so many people that come through, and I don't need to know it, and I want to know you. My heart is for ministry to know people, and we want to keep a small feel to the church where there's connections. And so the church and I, uh, the staff and I have been praying about how can we do this, and, and the word small groups came up because, you know, when you go someplace, you always hear small groups, and I, I'll be honest with you. I went, oh, man, something else to manage. I do not want some other headache. I just did. I promise you. That's the way I felt. I thought, oh, man, small groups everywhere. And I thought about, you know, and it's, but the Lord gave me this word, roundups, little roundups. You little round up here and round up there, round up here and round up there, and then you bring it to the herd. I thought, wow, that's pretty cool. What's that? <laughs> and so, but before that, I wasn't real in favor. Just be honest. And then God, you know, when you pray, God sends people into your life. He's got divine connections. You believe that? I believe every person that comes into my life, there's there for a reason. To teach me something, to do something, it's just there. I just do. I believe it. God coordinates. He, he orders my steps. And he brought uh, uh, Jeff and Amy Yusey into our lives. They came here from California. And before we even knew them, Amy had pulled up into the, drive, uh, the, the parking lot and prayed over our church. She prayed that the gifts of the Spirit would be released in our church. Isn't that awesome? Not even knowing it. But she, she prayed that. And so um, they came and they said, we, we would like to help any way we can. And we talked about small groups with them. They said, well, that's perfect. We were involved in a church in California that it grew and grew. And we were there from day one and watched it grow. And we were part of the small groups. We, we did those things. And so I was still just listening. You know, you ever been that part where you're just listening and you're like, hmm, but then when Jeff shared his testimony, see, we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. And Jeff, Jeff shared his testimony, and he, you want to share your testimony? All right, that'd be great. I put him on the spot. Look at there. I didn't do this. I should have done this in the first service, but it's a great, great testimony. We got time. How many's got time? Who give me five minutes? Look at that, 5, 10, 15, 20, 20. Oh, look at their hands go down. <laughs> So I was, when I, I was super far away from the church when I met some amazing friends. I was a golf professional, got invited to a tournament from a friend of a friend. And the gentleman that we were playing golf with asked me to give him some golf lessons. Met him, amazing man, gave me an invitation to his house, to a small group. And went to that small group a couple times and when you know the spirit and you don't know the spirit, that's an amazing thing. So I came, the spirit fell, says, you need to go to church with this family. I went to church that Sunday, was saved that Sunday, and served every day after that. So thank you, Lord, for bringing me to small groups. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you. That's good. Poor guy. I put him on the spot. It, but but that's, that's that... When he gave that testimony, when we, me and Jen talked with him and Amy, I thought, the light went off. We can reach people everywhere for Jesus. Jesus is bigger than these four walls. How many, how many have somebody on your heart that you would love to see come to Christ? Family, friends, coworkers, somebody, anybody. Amen? And how many knows that sometimes they won't come to church? Amen? But they'd come over to your house for a meal, wouldn't they? They'd come over to, to, to hear. And, and, and see, this is the beautiful thing. You have a support team because you can sign up some of your friends here at church to meet at your house, have a meal, talk about, talk about the, the message, the things that's going on here at the church. And, and then... And, and, and who knows where that goes? But I'm trusting the Holy Spirit. I'm believing that there's going to be little roundups all over Greene County. I'm believing that there's going to be roundups all over. And past that, who, why, why limit God? Amen? And, and, and so 
when, when he shared that, I thought, man, what a way to reach people for the Lord. You know, in small groups is not a, is not a new thing. Meeting in your home is not a new thing. My mom and dad, I asked her this, I had to find out, but they met at a prayer meeting. Amen? Whose house was it? Uncle Bob? She met at Uncle Bob's house. She met my dad there. How about that? I wouldn't be here without a small group. I should be a really, I should be a really big proponent. That's something, isn't it? How about that? And she was a Baptist girl. My dad was a Pentecostal from West Virginia. Amen? And, and they met, and it was a, a prayer meeting. And, and, and then uh, my mom used to have small groups. She didn't know this. My mom did small groups before small groups was cool. But she lived on Casadell Avenue. Was it Casadell Avenue? And you'd had all the, all the ladies of the neighborhood would come over. And it wasn't really an official Bible study. It's exactly like small group's supposed to be. It wasn't an official Bible study. They would just have uh, lunch or have, have a meal. And they would talk. And mom would talk about the things of the Lord. And years later, let some of those ladies that were in that meeting would come up to my mom and say, You know, the words you said to me, Carol, still ring in my ears. Because it's the power of the Holy Spirit. We have to make ourselves available. That's what we've got to do. We've got to reach out. We've always got to be reaching. I know as I was, I was speaking this that you've got a neighbor, you've got a friend, you've got a relative, you've got a parent. Maybe you've got a spouse that doesn't know Jesus. All things are possible to those who believe. I'm telling you, and if we just reach out, if we get out of our comfort zone, you know, for me to stand up and preach the, for the first time, I preached in jail for the first time. I wasn't in jail, but I was, went to, to jail to preach, to minister. But it was so hard for me. You, you should have known me back then. It was way out of my comfort zone. The first time I sang in church, it was way out of my comfort zone. But that's where God grows you. You would say, well, I don't want to go to somebody's house. God will grow you, give you some patience. <laughs> give you some love for one another. Amen? It's true. And so I started thinking about this. I thought, you got to show me in the Word. You know, how many is that kind of person? I, I, I hope you are. If I'm going to do something, I want to see it in the Word. So if you got your Bibles, turn to Acts 2. Acts 2. While you're turning there, I'm going to give you the back, background. This is, the, this, is the, this is like the banner this is the banner verse for the Pentecostal. They love Acts 2. We love Acts 2, don't we? That's like, that's our bread and butter right there. You know, because what it is is 120 gathered in the upper room. There's more than 120 here right now. But they're gathered in the upper room. They've been there for 10 days. They're praying. They're calling out to God. I don't know what it smelled like, but it, it had to be a lot, 120 people in one room. But they're, they don't care. They're, they're just meeting together, and they're praising God. And all of a sudden, the Bible says that suddenly there came a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the house where they were at. What well, was it, a house? It filled the house where they were at, and it said the tongues of fire came down on top of them, and it lit on top of them. Amen? And, and you could feel the power. And it was so great in that room that they couldn't contain it in the room, and they went out into the streets, and the Streets were packed because people were there from everywhere because it was Passover. And so everybody came back to Jerusalem. So there were people there from every tongue and nation, and they were just sitting there listening as these people were praising God in their language, and they didn't even know what it was. And some of them start, you know, you always got those people that are critical. If you, if you don't like critical people, don't go into ministry. Just saying. So you always got those, and all of a sudden one says, up, hey, them people's drunk. And Peter stands up. This is what I love because Peter was a chicken before. Peter denied Christ three times. In the natural, we can't do anything, but through him we can do everything. And Peter stood up under the power of the Holy Spirit and says, these, people, these men are not drunk as you're supposed. It's only 9 o'clock in the morning. But he said, this is that which Joel prophesied. He said that in the last days I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. He said, your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Amen. And that's the backdrop to what we're going to speak about. Everybody's excited. I get excited about that, don't you? And he preached. Peter went on to preach for like, who knows? It says a long time in the Bible, and the Bible doesn't exaggerate. So I'm sure it was a long time. 
But, but after he preached, the men were such convicted in their hearts, they said, what should we do? And he said, repent. Return from your sins. Turn to God and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and you shall be saved. And it said 3,000 were added to the church that day. You talk about church growth. How do you handle that? 3,000 in one day. But you know what? The beauty of it is the Holy Spirit gave us, he already gave us the, the example and the pattern and the word of how to handle it. Let's read it. It starts in Acts 2, and we're going to start at verse 42. It says, all the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching into fellowship, into sharing meals, including the Lord's Supper, into prayer. A deep, a deep sense of awe came over all of them, and the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. And all the believers, say all, all the believers met together in one place. Now that's like the church. They all came in one place and shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. They worshiped together at the temple each day. Wow, that's some dedication there, isn't it? Each day. Imagine going to church every day. They, they, they worshiped together at the, at the temple each day. Watch this. Now, here, watch this. They met in homes for the Lord's Supper and shared their meals with great joy and generosity all while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all people. And each day, say each day, the Lord added, say added, to their fellowship those who were being saved. Isn't that wonderful? That's a pattern laid out in Acts 2 for us as a church. It really is. We can't, you, you know, I can't, you can't be, I can't be all to everybody. Nobody can. But you can. You can bring, you can, you can reach out to that neighbor that's down the street or that friend that you want, that you would love to see come and, and, and meet your church family because some of your church family will be with you. Isn't that amazing? I think it's a wonderful thing. And the Lord, he, he's the one that orchestrates everything. See, time is running short. Do you believe that? All you got to do is read Matthew 24. If you want a homework assignment for this week, go home and read Matthew 24. And then turn on your news for 30. Yes, your pastor said turn on your news. Turn on your news for 30 minutes and then read a Matthew 24. And you don't tell me that he's not coming back soon. The foundation for everything that happens in the tribulation is being laid right now. The tribulation is only seven years long. It goes back that way. So if you're a pre-tribber, mid-tribber, or post-tribber, I don't care where you stand. I'm a pan guy too. I believe that the, it's all going to pan out in the end. But, but I know this. Seven years goes by so quick that everything that, that, that talks about in, in, in Revelation and the tribulation has to be set and in order. And it's getting there. A lot of times we had a, we had a Bible study on Wednesday night and, and we, we know that talking about authority. You want to poke a bear, you just say submit to authority and it pokes the bear and you just see it come out everywhere. It's like, woohoo, praise the Lord. We're going to pray for everybody. We have a healing line up front at the end. No, I'm just picking. It's okay. It's my, I guess, my own inside joke. <laughs> but um, everything that you see, if you don't understand it, the things that are happening, I see people making decisions in, in, in our government that makes absolutely no sense. But God has a purpose. God has a purpose. Listen to me. God is orchestrating behind the backgrounds. There is a foundation being laid. You know, one of the number one things of the Antichrist is control. Because you won't be able to buy, sell, or trade without taking his mark. Now, can you see America, half of America, at least the, the part that loves to be free to roll over and say, I'm not doing that? They won't do it. But it's happening. The foundation is being laid right now. Jesus is coming back so soon. He is coming back so soon. You know, the Bible in Revelation, it says there'll be two witnesses that come and preach, and it says the whole world will watch them preach. The whole world will hate them. And when it kills them and they lay in the street, the whole world will send gifts to each other. You tell me one other time in history that that could happen. 
right now it could happen. You could hold a device in your hand and watch somebody preach in Jerusalem. You think about that. Jesus is coming so soon. So it is so important for us to work while it's day. Amen? And who am I to criticize the methods? The message is sacred. Say that. The message is sacred. Jesus Christ, him crucified, risen and come again. That is sacred. But the methods, we need to reach people any way we can. Amen? We do. And what greater way than to say, come to my home, come and see. Come and see. Amen? Oh, boy. It's good. I believe this. I believe the book of Revelation wasn't written for us to build bomb shelters in our backyards, and prepare for the tribulation. It was written so that we'd build longer tables and invite people over to tell them about Jesus and the goodness of Jesus before it's too late. Amen? I see all the signs. He's coming. He's coming. If you would, just just bow your heads with me a moment. I want to ask you, Where do you stand? Where's your heart at this morning? I know Jesus is coming. I know that I know. Are you ready? Are you ready? He could come today. I work like he's not coming for 100 years, but I pray and I live like he's coming now. We've got to live rapture ready. Pastor Tim Goss here. Thank you so much for joining us at at Crossroads Cowboy Church for service. I hope the Lord touched your heart. I know that he's, he, is, he is here and he's leading us and guiding us. And maybe you were watching and the Holy Spirit really pulled on your heart. and You never gave your heart to Christ or maybe you just want to recommit your life to Christ. Well, it's as easy as asking him, say, Lord, forgive me of my sins. I need, I repent of my sins. I need a savior. Jesus, I believe that you are the son of God and that you came and you died for me and for my sins that I couldn't pay for. And uh, the Bible says if you believe in your heart and conf- or confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, that salvation shall come to you. And so if you did that, just then just start at living for him. Just ask him, Holy Spirit, show me, lead me and guide me. So excited for you if you did that. If, uh, if you would like to, to like and subscribe our channel, we would love that be able to share with others, maybe your friends. If you know somebody that doesn't know Jesus or, or they just need an encouraging word, um, just make sure you like and subscribe and share it with them. It's the easiest way you can do it. So thankful again that you are uh, joining us. Hope to see you again next time. God bless you.